All right, everybody. So what's promised, what I want to do is I want to bring in uh, a couple of gentlemen who could help us understand exactly what's going on in the world of Cardano and voting on chain. Uh, Vivek, Vivek and Mike, I want to say thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Great thanks to be for having on. us. All right. So gentlemen, uh, the first things first, I've got four questions for you because to me, polls are polls. And when I take a look at this, I'm just like, what's the difference? And uh, so the question I have is, first of all, and Mike, we, we covered this in our first time, but what is Vote Air and what does it do? The second thing is what's new with Vote Air and, you know, why, why are you guys uh, doing these things? Also, why to use it? I, again, uh, with these different polls, I think one's just as good as the other one. And then lastly, what's on the horizon with timelines, more or less. So I will start here. What is Vote Air <laughs> and what does it do? Sure. Uh, great question. So Voter is an on-chain voting platform built on Cardano. Uh, we wanted to make a tool that is accessible to uh, everybody who um, you know has a wallet, and uh, and so we built it. And we built it earlier this this year and launched uh, early September. Uh, there are three types of votes or three types of ballots that you can create: simple okay. vote, uh, delegated vote and a um, policy ID. The simple, all you need is uh, ADA and a wallet. The delegated is what runs for stake pool operators and it's really uh, designed for people with, um, with a stake pool and to create a vote that their delegators can actually vote on. And that might be changing your margin or other decisions that the stake pool might make. And then okay. the policy ID uh, vote is really uh, for people with a token, and that could be a fungible token, it could be an NFT, um, but it, that token can then define their audience, and the weight of that vote is based on how much of that token that the voter has. Gotcha. And, that, and before we take off, remind me, because I want to set one up real quick with you guys, because I want to see if it's as easy as what I think it is. Okay, Perfect. so that's that's vote there, and that's what it does. It's all about voting and getting things out there. All right, so now we know what it is. Let's talk about what's new with it. Because, Mike, when we talked, I don't think it even launched. I think it was like over a month ago, right? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, we were about a month out from launch, I think, last time we spoke, or, or at least a couple of weeks. So uh, obviously what's new since we spoke is that we've uh, we've launched, we've gone live. Uh, but the newest news right now is that we've actually changed our pricing structure. Um, uh -huh. So we did have uh, a different price for each type of uh, each type of ballot. Um, obviously, we're just trying to you know, fund development and whatnot of the platform, uh, but we got some user feedback essentially that they thought the fees were a little too high. Uh, we were targeting the, the policy ID votes towards projects and in kind of a higher price bracket. Um, but, you know, right now the, the economy is rough. Uh, we're in a bear market. Uh, so everyone's suffering, even uh, even the project. So we just, um, you know, we want to drive adoption. We want to get people using the platform. So we just lowered everything to one ADA. Um, and we'll see how that uh, that goes from there. Uh, voting is uh, is essentially free. You just have to pay the transaction fee. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We want to get the community use it, uh, using it and get some feedback. Yeah, so this is what I got confused. Because when, when you talked to me about it, I thought it was that everybody who voted had to, because before it was like two or three ADA or five ADA or something like that. And when you were talking to me, I thought it was that everybody who voted had to pay five ADA. And mm, I was like, well, gotcha. it's about... Yeah, it's about 30, well, how much is ADA right now? 30 cents? Uh, it's about 30 cents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 30 cents right. USD. So it's like, okay, it's like, okay, it's like, it's, it's like a buck and a half, somewhere around there, right? Yeah. So so for each vote, I'm like, well, you know, like that, that's that's something you got to pay a buck and a half to, to vote. But what you're telling me is that just to set it up was the five ADA. And now you dropped yeah. just the whole setup to one ADA. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. And when somebody votes, let's say you get, I don't know, two votes or a hundred votes or a thousand votes. Everybody who votes, the individual, they have to pay the transaction fee, which is three yeah, cents. So that's about uh, less than 0.28. I usually it's about 0.17. So that's less than 10 cents at today's price. Right. And people were complaining about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we are in a bear market and uh, people are hurt. So. Look, I get you. I get it. it sucks. It's, it's a bear market, but I'll be honest with you. Okay. This is going to lead me to my next question. And when you guys talk to me, I'm like, I, I, I did not get it. I'm like, okay, I understand that people want to vote and that's cool, but why don't we just use like a poll that we can you know, easily use on Twitter? I mean, it's, it makes sense to me, right? It's super simple. However, and I was, I was thinking about that and, you, and we were all talking about this. It came out of this. There was a little story I'll share with everybody. This right here is Simon Dixon. He put out a poll on Twitter, which was asking like, hey, 
is it better for the reorganization to go through Celsius itself, or would you like to go do something with, with Bank to the Future and use a security token and, and go this way? He put out this poll, and on specific time frames, at specific points, they would get like 500 or 1,000 votes in the other way of what Simon thought it was going to be because it, it, it was on his, it was on his, uh, his feed. And uh, on, in that poll, it looked like that everybody, everybody wanted a Celsius reorganization. And I was like, well, that's quite odd, but uh, okay. And then, of course, it came to light that you can do stuff like this where you can just buy 100, 250. I mean, whatever. Look at that. 750 votes for six bucks, yeah. which is, you know, y you can do whatever you want to and push it out. And that was a very quick uh, look at looky loo that I did on uh, old Google. And there's a ton of different websites that are like that where you can buy it. So I was like, okay, now I get it. If you want real a real poll, that would be a, that would be the way to do it. And on top of that, I know you guys did something with uh, Aneta BTC where they used yeah. your service itself. And uh, this was all for governance and they had a bunch of votes, very cheap votes, mm -hmm. and you can verify those on the blockchain. So just walk me through that. I guess kind of why use Voltaire, I get it, but what did I miss there? Yeah, and essentially this is uh, this is really the use case for, for blockchain voting. I think there's a lot of, uh, trust issues, I'd say right now with uh, with voting in general. I mean, you can look at uh, you can look at the issues that they had with the last U.S. election, where everyone was concerned that somehow the ballot was rigged, right? So that's one of the the great use cases for blockchain, where everything is on chain, it is visible, it's immutable. No one can go in and change it, um, and people can go in and validate that hey, my vote was counted. Uh, mm -hmm. and the, the votes are accurate. So that's what we're trying to do is create this, uh, this tool that people can use easily. Um, it's very easy to use. It's focused towards end users rather than uh, technical people. It's not a code library that you have to you know, install in your project. It's just a website that you can go through, make a couple clicks and you have an on-chain ballot uh, for your community. Um, so we really see uh, a great use case for this is uh, you know, projects and DAOs and whatnot that want to involve their community in important decisions about which direction they should go. They can have this ballot and they can, uh, you know, know that it's accurate, know that their uh, stakeholders, their, their project token holders and whatnot, uh, who are more invested in that project are actually counted and their, uh, their vote counts. Um, and yeah, we just wanted to create this tool uh, for the community. Perfect. Sounds good. So this will lead me to my, my last one. You know, Vivek, you can take this one. What's on the horizon? Because uh, you guys have already launched, which is pretty hard to do, but now what do you got in the pipeline? Yeah, it's a great question. So we've recently been uh, um, receiving some funding for uh, the integration of escrow smart contracts into mm. uh, the platform. And what that's going to allow is uh, people can set up a ballot for their organization and, uh, and, put some funds into the actual uh, platform and based on the smart contract and the outcome of the vote, it will be automatically distributed to the associated wallet. So that's what we have um, currently in the works. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed, that's going to be um, de delivered uh, by the end of March, um, if all things go the way we want them to go. And uh, then we have some other things following up after that, um, but we'll be announcing that as we get closer. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, so walk me through that real quick again. So like you set up a vote, you have the wallets connected, the smart contract, and you say, here's how we want to, this is how we want to uh, distribute these funds. And then you can all vote on it. Whatever people vote on, the one that wins, then it just automatically goes off to those, to those wallets. Is that how it works? That's correct. That's the intention. That is nice. I like that. That sounds pretty cool. Okay. So gentlemen, before we take off, uh, let's set something up. Because if Perfect. it's uh, as easy as say, I want to do that. So where am I going? Go, yeah, you can just go to the top of the page and uh, hit create a ballot. All right. Yeah, so this is where you'd select the type of ballot that you want to do. The simple is just anyone with data can vote. So we might want to start there. Um, if you wanted to create one as a stake pool operator yeah. uh, for your delegators, you'd pick that one. And then yeah. the policy ID one, if you were a project owner, you'd, you'd select that. But we can do the simple right now. And Simple. How it I'll works. be simple. So the yeah. ballot name. Um, yeah, so this is just going to be the name that shows on the list. So whatever you want to. Uh, samples. And then this is just, uh, this is. This not could mandatory. be, I think it's usually, you know, more context about uh, about the ballot and what it's all about. 
Um, and then the URL is optional if you had a, a link to your website or somewhere where you can uh, find more information. Okay. Start yeah. date, end date, snapshot yeah. date. What do we got here? Yeah. So that essentially, one of the ways that we uh, prevent people from uh, you know, fudging the results. If, if we're waiting ballots based on how much ADA or how many tokens you have in your wallet, we don't want someone to cast a ballot and then move their ADA over to another wallet and cast a ballot with that one. So everything is based on snapshot dates, which we use the epic transitions um, as the, the dates. And then as of your balance at that point in time, that's how much uh, vote weight you have. Fantastic. All right. So we'll click next to the question. Question one. So this would yeah. be, am I going to give tomato coin to all my delegates of D news? Should we give um, tomato coin to all Should we give tea coin? Yeah. Cool. And again, the description is optional. You can just put it, uh, put something there if you wanted to. Yeah. And then POS, case... proof of sauce. <laughs> oh, I like number that. Of number, number of choices, two, three, four. We'll say two. Limit choices yeah. to one. Choice number one, yes. Description, don't need it. No. And description and that's it yeah so then just hit preview and it'll show you what that ballot is going to look like for voters um you know if you don't like it you can go back and kind of edit and tweak yeah and edit my edit my spelling yes exactly okay, yeah and, let's exactly. See. and then and then we just press finished yeah and, so at okay. this point i don't think you connected your wallet yet so it'll tell you uh prompt you to connect a wallet and then gotcha. it would just create a transaction uh for one ada and it would have the appropriate metadata that would put that ballot on chain. For one ADA. I don't know if I can swing that, but I'll give it a <laughs> shot. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. So if you're looking for information on Vodair, I linked uh, the website in the description. Also, their Twitter account. You can find them. Mike, Vivek, I think we said it all today. Thanks so much for uh, informing me of what's going on in the Cardano community. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks right, for having everybody. us on. Excellent. Right. Let's jump Thanks. back.